realized how much I loved you guys. Anyway, on that note, let's jump over to uh, this. So this is what, um, this is like the new toy I've been playing with. So if anybody, uh, okay. There was like a random string sound that came from somewhere. But anyway, so this is the new sample library I'm, I uh, purchased recently. It's called uh, Thrill by Native Instruments. And it's, uh, the best way to describe it is like an aleatoric instrument. And I use the word instrument very, very carefully. So usually when you get a aleatoric sample library, you get baked phrases. You get phrases where they, uh, where all the, all the, it's basically you're buying a sample playback. So you push a key and you get a pre-recorded sound. And then you push the next key and it's slightly different. And you push another one. It's like, you know, or best to describe it. But they're baked. They are recorded wave files that you're just playing back with the keyboard. Thrill, on the other hand, is the first instrument I can think of in this category. Um, things that compete with it, I think you've got uh, Tutti by, I think, oh, who made Tutti? Is it Sonic Kinetic? I think it is. I'm going to have to have a look, sorry. Whoever made it. Uh, yeah, Sonic Kinetic's Tutti. Tutti, Tutti, Tutti. Um, and uh, Spitfire's Albion 4, both do that. Uh, yeah, bo both are aleatoric libraries. But this is the first instrument, and I'll show you what I mean by that. So let me just, for example, use the first preset. So if we just hold a key. So normally this is what you'd get. Can you guys hear this okay? So that is normally what you would get. Like it would play that and then you play a different key, you get something different. But the thing is we have this XY pad here, right? So if you look, we have two different sides to this instrument. It'd be easier if I show you this. So you see we have rush strings, bends up and down on the left. So this way. And on the right, we have low and thrilling and power strings, okay? Which is on this side. So, you know, I'll show you that by going. So here we just have rush strings and bends up and down. And then on this side, low and thrilling and power strings. But the cool thing is, is we have velocity. Not just velocity, it's like overall power, overall intensity, right? So if I do this now and go upwards. So you see, I could build my own builds. And that's the thing with aleatoric music that a lot of people don't quite understand is that aleatoric basically means that you're playing music, uh, you're basically playing randomly, but within a set of rules. So like rush strings, they may say between this note and this note, uh, play, play only on the lowest string, you know, the first five notes. They're the, on, they're the only things you can use and you have to do it really quick. So they'll all go, blah, 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 but they'll all be playing it differently so you get this different sound or they'll say you can pluck any instrument but you can't go too loud. Anyway, that's what aleatoric music is. And so this library actually makes it a viable, um, a viable instrument to do that type of music because, because they are random phrases inherently by design. My, by moving this around, it is the equivalent of standing with the orchestra, playing the random samples and saying louder, 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 just you guys, just you guys. And so like you can actually create legitimate aleatoric music. And it would, in my opinion, this is one of the ones, this is one of those types of genres of music where you can actually do the type of music that you would do live because you have the same amount of control that you would have in the live environment. So for example, you know, and then the monster's getting closer. But then something changes. It's moving away. And he's coming closer again.
So you can see you can create along with the scene that you're doing an actual uh, musical interaction, which is awesome. So the way this works is actually really cool as well. So you see this uh, up and down, uh, this, I guess that would be the x-axis. Is that x-axis up and down? I guess. So what we can do is you see that there's these little blue, um, these little blue ticks across, you know, pan. They're like volume dials or whatever. So let's say we go on this side and we turn bends up and down all the way down. Right? Oh, let's have bends up and down all the way up. Bends up and down. Hello? Well, that's not good. Okay, let's choose something else. Well, that's no good. Oh, God. Okay, there we go. Now, why is that happening? Now, that's doing what I was going to show you, but already. Okay. For some reason, that doesn't come in till halfway. I have to have a look at why that is. Why is that? Oh, that's why. God damn it. I'll show you this bit in a second. Sorry. I had to figure out why it wasn't playing. Okay. So you see the little tick, right? Let me just go back to this initial part. So as you can see, all the way down, you get the low rumble. And then we go all the way up to the top. We have, at the minute, we're only listening to this one, right? So let's say that we want this, this one here to come in gradually. We don't want it to be at the bottom. In fact, I, need, I want something a bit more aggressive. Um, let's go strings, aggressive. Let's go bow on the bridge, right? So this one's just always playing, right? But this one here, so I'm just going to mute this one. We want to be only, or we want it to come in gradually, right? So what we can do is, you see this little up and down here? We just drag this up. One thing that bugs me about this library, by the way, is you can't go in the opposite direction so that you, for example, you can only have this quiet. But let me just show you this, the way it's set up. So if we have it like this, you see there's nothing there and it will slowly fade in, which means that we'll only have the bow down at the bottom. And then as we bring it in, and because this one will go up louder than this one, as we get into like this kind of area, we actually feel the other sound overtake the, uh, overtake our original bow on the bridge. And we can also do the same with pan. And this is, so as I was mentioning, so what would be cool is if at the top, this one, for example, didn't play, right? This one here didn't play. And then at, it only played at the bottom. And to do that, you would have uh, that blue line go the opposite direction. But for some reason, you can't go negative value. It's a linear passage, which means you can only make it go from loud, uh, from, from nothing to loud. You can't go from loud to nothing. Uh, wait. From nothing to soft, sorry. Which is a shame because I like I <laughs> you you can see that it's possible because this, the pan, obviously goes into negative value, right? But the volume only goes lin in a linear fashion uh, that way, which is a shame. But as you can see, so we can actually have it so that the louder this gets, so the further up, in fact, let's do it the other way around just so that it's conformity. Uh, so this means that as this goes up, this sound is going to go from left to right or right to left. I don't know which way yet. I mute you again. So it's in our left speaker. So what we'll do is we'll pull this so it's not the full way and we'll have this so that it actually starts. So if we pull that, that means it'll be sort of quiet at the bottom. We'll have it there, and then we'll have it so this one goes right to left, like this. So you see, now just on this one side, we have movement. We have the bow on the bridge going from right to left. We have the rush strings going from left to right. 
and the rush strings, while they start quieter, end up louder than the other ones. So we have this, this organic kind of overflowing of the sounds, right? Which is cool, which is awesome. And so, and you can also do the same with pitch. So like, let's say for example, we wanted it to go up, uh, let's say like a semitone like this. I think, we, I think it's like this. So let's, so now the pitch is going to be changed with it as well. So you see, you can create natural risers. We'll do it even more aggressive. So it's like. And that sounds natural. And that's the thing. The problem we have, I call it symphobia complex, is you have these baked things which sound incredible, like the symphobia trailer risers for the past like 10 years or something have been the go-to riser, right? They've been the go-to orchestral riser. And it's become like the Wilhelm scream. When I hear it, and I hear it all the fucking time, when you hear it, it takes you out of it. It takes you out of the um, out out of the moment, you know. Like you, it, you can no longer suspend your disbelief or whatever it is, because you've heard it, and it, you know, it's like a canned sound, so you can't take it seriously as a piece of music. You just hear it as that wave file that you've heard loads and loads of times. And the thing with this is because you can uh, modulate the pitch on instruments <coughs> uh, individually, you can create your own. And I mean. This is just this one sound that's rising at the minute. Now, if we can make this one, you see, so now we can make this one actually go downwards. So the louder it gets, the further down it goes. So it'll start high. And if we put the two together, we'll have a cross. So you see, this is something that because it's just random playing, you can get away with the sound. I mean, that's a bit extreme as far as, um, you know, that's a bit extreme as far as uh, the actual um, players would go. And then, of course, we have um, spread, which creates more. Let me just do it on this side. So let's bring up the spread. So let's bring up high voices. So this basically simulates, uh, according to the bottom down the bottom, it activates the spread effect, which generates additional voices with different pitches. So it essentially is playing the sample again, but with different voices so that it makes a wider sound, much how you would, um, you know, build a, uh, you know, how you would layer things together to make them sound bigger. So. Right? Which is cool. But the cool thing about that, so we... So let's go with the, let's go with what's mono and extreme sound like. Beautiful. Right. We'll go with mono and extreme. So the cool thing about this, again, we can modulate this, which means, wait, oh God. Uh, can we do it negatively? Oops. Didn't mean to do that. No, we can't. So we can only make this go. We can only have more voices the louder it goes. So what we'll do is we'll have it so that at the bottom, there's no extra voices. And then what's going to happen is it's going to have more voices, more like more voices come in as well as get louder as it goes up and it's going to pitch up. So it's going to get more extreme as a riser. And then of course we layer the other one in and we'll have this one do the same. Awesome, right? Okay, so that's that's just using the up and down. Let's not forget we have these sounds over here. Right? So this time let's let's actually just change the string. Let's have some brass. 
So let's do a similar kind of thing. Let's get some aggressive high brass. And we'll get some, let's get some random circuits in there. What, so what we're going to do, oh, that didn't work, but okay. Crunch screams. Okay, so we'll have this be like our weird sound. So what we'll do is we'll come over here. So you can see you get your attack release if you want to change those. Uh, you know, you want to make it come in and go out later, but we're not going to bother with that. So let's just take a quick look at this. This is the layer section. So these two lines basically means that the uh, the volume will go the same for both. If we do it like this, um, it's kind of doing what we did with the volume here, which means that the, this left layer won't play at the bottom and you can adjust at what degree. So for example, let me do this the other way around. Um, uh, yes. Yeah. So what this means is that brass will be all the way from the bottom, but this layer here will, this crunch screen will only come in at the very top. Okay. So awesome, right? So we have we have two different basic sounds. We have we have our creepy brass. And on this side we have our our strings doing there across the bridge, right? And then they rise at the top. So the thing, like what we can do now is we have like an instrument that we can play. So we can have like it's creepy and then you know, things get a little bit more intense. So we can bring in some of that bow on the bridge. We want it to get a bit more intense. And then maybe we want just our crunch screams for a bit. And now if we wanted to actually do a we want to do like a big riser, like something happens. You see, we have, because we designed it so that up there on the left, we'd have a string riser, we can go there at any time. And that's the cool thing, of course, it works in reverse. So if we go from top to bottom, those strings are going to feel like they're uh, a glissando, but downwards, a decrescendo. It's not crescendo, whatever. So, you know, something stings up on screen and we bring it downwards. So. And we know we have our brass. So if it's just tension we want, we can go over to our brass over here. Or of course we can go over here to our bowed. Beautiful. Okay, so that's just using those. So next let's take a look at the effects section. So we have a few extra little things here. We have color, uh, which is basically like an EQ. I guess is the best way to think about it. So let's uh, just go over here. And we'll just change these around. So let's take a look at analog filter. So if we wanted it to be more like a filter. And so you can hear what the filter is doing there, right? Uh, and they have these different EQ presets. And these are usually good because like, if you have something like Brilliant, it makes it sharp on the top end. Is my mic messed up? Oh god. What is it doing? Is my mic messed up? Oh god. fix this. <laughs> I 
I'm sorry. I don't know why that all of a sudden decided to turn up to 100. I'll keep that over there. That should be better, right? I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. It was the sounds I did to turn up to 100. I don't know why that happened. But anyway, alas, let's continue. So, EQ sayings. So as, as I forget where I got it, I forgot where I got to. So smooth mid. So as, as I was saying, as um, the further up you go, so let's say that you want to have more impact. Sometimes you can have, uh, for example, just an EQ, you know, slightly boost those highs so it gets more aggressive uh, on the top end. And yes, as the chat is saying right now, it's like a, <laughs> the library itself summoned a demon to, uh, <laughs> for some reason. Anyway, so if we bring this up. Or we could have deep cuts. So this is basically a notch filter. Right? And what this does, you know, it, it basically has like a band, uh, like a band reject like that, which is the opposite to a band pass in EQ. And it sweeps across, which creates an awesome effect. And, you know, obviously on this side, there's nothing going on yet. So now we have like a sci-fi type effect. So, then we have uh, stereo. So this is basically like a stereoizer. So that'll just make it feel wider, but you need to be careful with this because if it plays back mono, uh, if it's just separating, if it's using a stereo stereoizer, uh, when you fold it to mono, it will actually disappear because it will phase cancel itself out. So you need to be careful when doing that. So what this is doing, like the louder we go, the more wide it gets to complete mono at the bottom and then spreads out. I actually don't like this deep cuts anymore. So we're going to press it. Okay. Then we, of course we have phaser, not something I use much, but I'll show you what it sounds like. So it'll get more phasey the louder we go. These can actually sound quite aggressive. I prefer ones that are like aggressive. What's this one? So we've gone from like, as it opens up, it both gets wider the EQ opens up and we get some phase kind of crap just on top. Of course, we have a distortion here. So let's add, let's try it in. So let's do the same. So as it gets louder, it gets more aggressive. So you can see the difference in the sound we've got now. If I just turn these off. So you see now we have like a kind of science fiction-y kind of sound on our right channel. And then we have this mutate, which is essentially convolution reverb, right? But they're not using it in a normal way. So normally you'd have like <clears throat> orchestral hall and um, orchestral hall and uh, small studio and drum room and things like that. But what they've done is they've got like chimney sweep or combed space. So what I'll do is I'll put this up like here and I'll turn this all the way up so you can hear what it does. So you, you hear how completely different that makes the sound.
And the cool thing about that is of, with, you know, the same with all the other things, we can have that come in as we go up, right? So it's going to turn into that cool meow as we get louder. So at the bottom, we'll still have our brass. But then it will slowly turn into the grind. We can bring our strings back in and see how it fits together. So let's try it on let's try a few different of these sounds. So let's chimney sweep. Filthy, out of breath. What does that sound like? I love that one. Okay, so now, now we can actually do the same on the other side. By the way, they were just the mod effects. Uh, you know, we have actual EQ and space as well. So space is like I mentioned earlier, you know, we, we can do things like have an actual... Uh, You know, as I mentioned, you get things like the hall. So let's put it in Taj Mahal. So you hear that reverb, right? And the cool thing is, as I keep saying, we can add the modulation on that so that the reverb gets bigger the wider we go. Now, this is what I was talking about. I don't like the fact that it's only a linear modulation because if we could go the other way, what that means, if we could go the opposite direction, that would mean that we have more reverb the lower we go, which means that the lower brass is really spread out and then it would focus because the reverb would get smaller as it went higher. I wish it could do that. It doesn't do that yet, unfortunately. So what we'll do here is we'll have it so that it builds. Now, what I tend to do with these is I tend to record them. So like something like that, I would record and then I would resample back in, load as a pad or something. Because for example, I could go. Because what I'm doing is because the sound exists, as I pull this up again, that reverb that's still carrying on gets caught up in the reverb of me turning it back up. So it just keeps turning the reverb back up and you end up getting this kind of little bit of a loop. I mean, it, it's not looping because it's not sending a new signal through, but alas. So then we have uh, spheres. It's a shame you can only have one of these at a time, it seems. Okay, what I'll do quickly is I'm just going to turn the mutate off and I'll make it because this is going to be too chaotic. So I'm just going to turn off the crunch screen for now. Right, so we're just on the brass now. In fact, let me let me make it something more obvious. Let's do strings. Let's go with that because it's easy to hear what the reverb's doing. Okay, I'll turn it down. Right, so where was I? Effects. So we go back to here. So let's take a look at space. So now we're on spheres, which is a similar kind of thing. So we have A on. Let's go with deep breath. You hear how that's kind of <sighs> destiny or density. So spheres feel more like tails. They feel like reverb tails. So it doesn't feel like it's doing anything to the sound when I push the key, but when I let go. Okay. Rain.
And the cool thing with spheres is, for example, I, let's say I go up this side and then I'll come back down and go over to this side. You'll hear the sphere of this one carry over, which is a nice kind of transition. So I could go. Okay. <laughs> oh, space station. What's that sound like? It's almost like a uh like an echo. Lost in echoes, okay. And then you hear as it cascades into the darkness. Right, so then let's take a look at resonant. This I get the feeling this might be quite piercing, but So that resonates like some pipes by the sounds of it. Fat, oh no, I thought you said fat resonance, it's bar resonance. So we bring that up. That's kind of cool. Oh, let's listen to monks. So that sounds like a symbol to me. Orchestra, let's have a listen. <laughs> cool, so that kind of resonates. It sounded like an orchestra kind of tuning up or something, which is cool. Um, yep, so went deep kick, upright kick. Let's have a listen. Okay, so then we have uh, vintage, which is just kind of your delays. Delays and rebuilds, rather. Just your typical kind of reverb there. Uh, and then echo is what you imagine. Dirt delay. So you hear that fade away and then reverse is, as you can imagine, you play the sound and it reverses it. Okay. So that, there's, the, uh, there's the extra little space things. And then of course you've got EQ. So if you want to uh, bring the frequency of like 12K up, mm, where's 12K? You know, oh, fuck it, 10K. So let's say we wanted it to open up. And it doesn't seem like you can actually modulate that. I mean, it looks like you can, but. <laughs> so you see from scratch, we managed to build a decent sounding like string riser, right? But this was my first test. What did I make? As you can hear, it doesn't have to be, um, it doesn't have to sound like an orchestral riser. The thing that this does well is they, they sampled a load of like modular synths and uh, metallic sounds. So you can create these ambient beds 
which means that like I've I've used this pretty much on every track I've done um, over like the past few weeks. Well, bar a few, because what it's good at is, you know, like in a track when you need to just set a mood and then you like have some strings playing or you have like some brass chords or something. You know, this is basically just wind. But I can build the tension around that. Or if I'm doing a scene where there's a synth just going. In fact, I wonder if we can just set something like that up. Let me set something like that up. Um, 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 um. Let's have a listen. DJ Chaos. DJ Chaos. Uh, la, la, la. What would that be? Maybe not that, but... Yeah. Okay, that's a shitty sound, but that, right? Where's my, where's my button? sound for it really you see that that takes it from just adding that little sound at the bottom you see just because we have that bass line running if we bring this up slowly you see that it kind of builds into a you know it feels more like a track like it's got more to say So you see something like that. What else we got? Bass pulse. So we have something like that just playing and then So you see, you kind of get like a, you know, it will just carry on riding. So let me, I'm just going to try it. Like, let me go circuits, aggressive. Let's go with driven stutter. Like, I'm not even going to listen to them. Let's go with voices. Ooh, let's go with, I'm, I'm going full aggressive. Uh, dejected angels <laughs> on this side. Let's go metal, aggressive. Crying marim, nah, that's that's, that's that. sim, nah, devil's organ sounds good. Oh, I went with simblish, whatever. And then we'll go circuits again, threatening, uh, grungy pad, and then let's just see what it made. <laughs> now, that's another prime example of one that can just sit under something, you know what I mean. Uh, let's go with it. So we got the, the bass line just playing and then we can
Okay, so you see, like, just by having the baseline ride, and then I'm moving in and out, and I'm changing the dynamics, and I'm changing the actual texture of the sound, you see, it actually ends up being an interesting piece of music because there's, there's a lot of libraries out there currently where the drones, and because that's a drone essentially, where the drones are very static or, you know, like even if I loaded a drone up in um, Omnisphere, it would move around depending on, um, it would move around depending on uh, the modulations I've set up for it and, you know, the macros and the controls. But this, because you have this XY pad, you you are playing it like an instrument, which I think is underlooked in a lot of instruments. You know, but even me as a developer, that's like, I looked at this and I'm like, that makes so much sense. I don't know why I, I haven't done that before. Is not just allowing people to push a key and then it play things back, but instead to have them actually be able to control the outcome. Because aleatoric, if you look at it, is one of the most simple um, applications for something like this because the music itself is intrinsically random. So, you know, it's harder to do with a string, you know, like a string that's playing specific notes because it needs to be something specific. But because this by design is random, having this control is exactly what you would do if you had the live players in front of you. You would be louder, more of you, less of you, except we have more control because we have things like um, convolution reverbs and, you know, distortions and stereo width and how many different uh, voices we want to bring in over time. The only problem I mentioned with it is we can't do it in reverse. These, these controls or some of the controls are linear, which means you can only make an effect come in as it gets louder as opposed to making an effect come in as it gets softer. Like, for example, like I mentioned earlier, having the reverb be more apparent when you're on the soft notes, but then the reverb slowly turns off as the thing gets louder because you don't want it to get too aggressive, you know, or too abrasive. So something worth mentioning um, is this uh, this control is uh, it's modulatable, which is awesome, which means you can, you know, you can play in what you're doing, but then uh, edit it after the fact. However, you cannot do that multi timbrally So as you can see here, thrill, oh, I don't know why I put mo fuckers afterwards. Sorry, that's just my kind of thing. There's children. Think of the children. Anyway, so you need to have uh, access to the modulation data if you want to use this. So, for example, if I drop this on like a, a multi timbral, you know, where this this isn't actually an instrument. This is a MIDI channel that points to the instrument here. I wouldn't be able to do this and edit the edit it after the fact. I would do all this, and it would just uh, when I played it back, it would just stay where the last. I mean, I can show. Well. If I can't be asked to show you, <laughs> it would just end where I left it, right? So what you need to do is you need to come into like whatever your DAW is and do the equivalent of what I'm about to do here is you need to click read and write, right? You need to turn on your write thing. Hang on. I just need to uh, go to my chat room quick. It appears that someone is um, being being a sour, a sour puss. So we're just gonna we're just gonna ban this guy, okay? And so what you do is you read and write, okay? So you put that on, and now I mean, let let me show you it. Actually, I, I might as well show you it without. So if I record without, right? Wait, what? So if I play this back, God damn it. Cubase being Cubase. You see, it stays in the last place I left it. But if I put it on right and then, you know, record over it or record a new thing, for example, now, you see that these two things are now clicked on because we're writing the modulation data as we're playing back the sound. So you 
see here, now it's written all that modulation data for me, which is awesome. So let's say, for example, we get here. You see it's doing its thing now. And we like we knew that it was too loud at this point. We can just we can just pull these bad boys down. And now when it plays back, wait, well, I'll do it drastically so you can see that it is actually having an effect. If you watch it now, we pull it down here, you'll see a significant movement when we get to there. And down. You see? So make sure that you have your read right and then make sure that you turn the right off. The amount of fucking times I do that and I'm like, oh, what if I did that? And then I'm editing all the MIDI data and it bugs me. Um, I do wish that, I mean, this is a Cubase thing, but I do wish that like the last thing you touch. So like if I move this, for example, I wish that that would become the, the, active, the active CC control like that. I mean, if I push right and then... Uh, push play and then move it, then it appears. But I wish it just appeared when you moved it, like, you know, you had an active bar. But anyway, I've, I've, I've spoken to people about this. <laughs> but yeah, so that's the gist of the library. But now I'm just gonna go through a few presets so you guys can see the kind of things. I, I've only covered one part of the library, shit, okay. I forgot about this, completely forgot. Because that's the kind of man I am. Okay, uh, equalizer, saturation. These are just, uh, you know, controls uh, that no one really cares about too much. But yeah, so here you have like your master uh, master EQ, which controls the EQ balance, blah, blah, blah. No one cares. Anyway, so users. So I forgot about this thing. So clusters, right? This will blow your fucking mind. And this is why I love it. So let's go with loud strings. And let's go with complex cluster. Uh, on this side. I can't believe I forgot about this. So you see now on this side, we don't have the two, uh, we don't have the two things. We just have all these numbers, right? And what this does is this actually builds a cluster over time. So the way to think of this is where these numbers stand. Uh, so number two would be here. So it's, it's vertically where this dot is. So this voice will come in when it's there and then three will come in when it's here. Six will come in when it's like here. So if I push the key now. Okay, but you can also have it glide. So if you have like voice eight be like super up, you know, like it shows you where the octaves are. So this bit's like slightly, so one is on the line, two is on the line, three is slightly below, four goes. So left means it's detuning, right means it's tuning up. So let's just tune them all up slowly like this. So now I've put it on glide, which means that as I bring it up, it'll... Well, it should have done. Maybe I fucked up. Let me change it to something different. should feel lower. Right, so these these are usually good when you do it correctly. <laughs> Hang on. Uh, so let's turn off the medium. Let's just go with strings and go with uh, just, just normal, just tremolo. Oh yeah, by the way, these are, these are um, melodic. So on the keyboard where you play. You know, so you can actually. So if I just hold one note, it will play that note. So we'll put on glide again.
So if we make this extreme. So you see, we've moved all these things up and they're gliding in between these uh, these different tunings, right? We'll have it so that number six gets really fucking loud. So add on will basically, like as you can see at the bottom, it'll start with the root key, so the note I'm playing. And then after each after each time I cross the line, it adds it to the cluster. So just one voice, two voices, three voices, four, five. So like if I do it like that, you can actually hear what it's doing. So we want it maybe there in the cluster. And so we just turn that down a little bit so it feels a bit more natural. Uh, we'll have this one be there. And of course, like it does here, you can bring in uh, different pannings as well. So now when we build, And of course, you can scroll through the different voices here. You, you, I click them up here because they're just there, so I know which one I'm going to. Uh, okay, so so let's say that I play like a chord, a D minor, and then we build up like this. It's absolutely perfect for doing those kinds of builds. So we, it, like, if we start by playing a cluster, let me play like a tritone. And that's, so we already have a tritone. It's already pretty filthy. Then we build. Those clusters will come in for each note. Absolutely amazing. Like, I love that so much. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put it on, let's, let's do like a tutti. Tutti. So I believe each voice is actually kind of a different instrument. I'm going to test that theory there. Okay, so that's like an oboe-ish type sound. What's this one? It's whatever the fuck that is. <laughs> And the cool thing is, so like, let's say I just hold the note. Like, I don't have to go through it quick. Like, say there's something happening on screen again. You know, like, let's say we go, we do our, yeah. So we got that thing going. And then we can. You know what I mean? I just, all I have to do is like, and remember, we still have sounds over here. So we want, we can bring those in with the cluster. I'm going to turn them down there. It's melodic. And don't forget we can add effects to this. 
So we're going to have it so that as this gets loud, we add the hard comb space onto it now. bring in and remember as we get louder now we've got the comb space on so it's going to get gritty as we get up there still holding that note and I come back down the bottom we're back to our root note still doing the thing shut up omnisphere okay so let's turn that off so remember i'm just using one sound there so let's try it with brass that was just strings right uh brass climax that sounds beautiful and one of the problems i have with it a little bit is if you change the source sound you also lose uh your modulation which is a shame so you see like i've changed the brass um cluster what it actually did is it changed all my uh eq so they're kind of like presets within presets but let's listen to the brass one. oh no that's still the fucking let's get rid of this modulation shit okay so <laughs> so it's a nice brass sound well, I mean, it's... Fuck. Anyway. So let's say we we wanted it to just to just kind of just kind of wail around, not get too crazy. So now we can do it like that. 
So what does Parallel do? Let's just read it at the bottom. All cluster voices play from the start of their respective pitch and volume sets to generate more dynamic performance. The strength should be modulated in order to build up the cluster volume. Okay. Okay, so Parallel plays all of these notes at the same time and then they build. Glide, I believe, goes between them. That doesn't sound right, so let me read. Start with the root key and glide towards their... All right, so they when they start, they start their root key. So it's, they all start and then they all pan out. So that grow, grows like a tree and this just adds on sounds as you go across. And again, we'll just give it a try with the actual... Shut up, Omnisphere. <laughs> right. Uh, oh, dramatic chord. I like the sound of that. Nope, that's still Omnisphere. Ooh. Ooh. I like this. I'm going to have one of these pitch up. See, that's the cool thing with this is even by themselves. So like I mentioned, other libraries like this will let you play back some cool recordings, but they're pre-baked. These have those, but they're just at the different levels. Like if I push that there and just hold the key, that sounds cool. Like I would gladly just play that as a loop, but I have, firstly, I have melodic so I can just I can play it in any key. Right? But I can, I can control it. It's, it's beautiful. Flutter spread. You know I'm going to go with flutter spread. It doesn't like it when you play lots of notes, though. One of those notes is, like, really in key. This one? Yeah, that one was really in key. The fifth note was in key, so I want it to be more clustery. Let's just change this side to like some sort of circuit bent cluster scrape and driven stuff. And that's the cool thing with the clusters because they're tonal. Like I say, when I do something like this, like when I play a bass note and hold the pedal, when I play a note, it works. Oh, and I didn't mention, of course, that you can, on this side, have a cluster as well. So, for example, I can have strings doing this side. Let's do dense tremolos doing clusters on this side. No, nope, that's Omnisphere again. So on that side, we have that, and on this side, we have brass. 
So now we have. Try oh minor tremolo. Oh, we're on the wrong side. You could put that under a horror score. Just that. Just that by itself. Do we have voices with the cluster? I don't think we do. Let's do woodwinds. Let's go with Fluty reattack. I could just play that under a scene. And I would be I would be on the edge of my seat. I'm gonna have it as add-on though. You know what I mean? It's just creepy. And now I'm going to change this side to a loud circuit, aggressive noise and screams on this side. So just by even having a tiny bit, look, this is all the way over. Right? Yeah. Uh, but just having a smidgen, a smidgen of the left tra channel. You see it brings ambience to that quietness. Is there someone there behind you? Someone behind you. <laughs> Is there someone behind you? Did you check? When was the last time you actually looked behind you to see if there was someone there? I mean, look, they could be right there. But there wasn't anyone there. But you swear you heard something. You swear there was someone there before. What was that noise? What was it? Is there someone walking behind you? Was there? Was there? Nah, I'm sure it was nothing. I'm sure it was nothing. What was it? Now nah, it was just your mum calling you for tea. You see, so like, <laughs> but that's the thing. Like, I can, I can manipulate the scene live. You know what I mean? So the ability to actually, like an instrument, react to the music. And it's so often, and I'm sure many of you have written horror scores or tension scenes or underscore before, where you you have a certain tone in mind, usually one of these aleatoric type things, but you load up a pre-baked sound and it sounds great, but it doesn't go with the music. You know what I mean? So someone's walking, like I said with this, you know, like you can imagine the scene. So like, you know, there, there's a teen girl and she's on the, she's on the phone and like the light turns off, you know, like, and she's like, what is that? You know, why did the lights turn off? And then you could have easily have those sounds, right? But then say you wanted to notch up, right? So you've gone from this sound and then all the lights in the house turn off and it goes silent. And then you just cut to that, right? And you know you want that. And then she starts walking through the house. Now, the problem you would have here with another library is because it's pre-baked, you'd have to load another song a little bit louder and try and blend between the two. But here, we can, we can just bring it up. But also, not only are we bringing that up, we realize that she's moved into a different room. And maybe we see like a shadow just cross the room a little bit. 
just a little taste. Like she walks forward and then like just before the scene changes, you know, just before the, the camera cuts, a little thing goes across the screen. Just a little flick like that. And then the lights turn on, but something's missing. Hello? Who's out there? Who's out there? And it's nothing, it's just the cat. It's just the cat. Oh, scribbles. You're always there. But then something falls over in the distance. And now she's screaming. Scream. Is that you? Is that you? And it's nothing. And then it is. But then we cut. We cut to a different scene. And they're all talking. They're like, where is she? And they hear a scream and they're like, oh. So they're walking over. So you see, like I described it and I was able in time with what I was saying, able to replicate what was happening on screen, but musically. And that's the power of something like this. And that's why I'm describing this as an instrument as opposed to a sample library. Because when, when you use a sample library, usually, you know, you're playing the notes back and that's fine. And you're using it like an instrument. Like if you've got a cello uh, legato and you play a melody, you're using it like an instrument. But things like this, are usually just playing back a sample. It's playing back a captured loop. It's like using a phrase library. This is the first instrument of this type because this type of music isn't about the notes. It's about the rules of what the music's supposed to do, okay? So as I mentioned at the beginning, aleatoric is, the, uh, is randomness within rules, right? So the players have a certain amount of things they're allowed to do, but they do it according to, you know, so like if you're building like this, you know, it means get louder, get louder. Or if it means you shush, but you keep going, you know, you can, that was what you would do with that. So this is the best way to do that kind of thing. And like I mentioned again, because it's not just, let's go with soft, uh, soft circuits. We'll go with mystical GS on this side. And then let's go with, uh, not loud. Let's go with soft uh, voices. Let's go with bright winds. You know, we can also use it as like ambient textures. Like it doesn't have to be horror. You know, someone's walking, just walking through some woods. This side's a bit too aggressive, so let's make it. You know, and if we wanted to, we can change all these to not aggressive. Let's go with um, light. Gregorian ghost on there. And then this one will be, let's do all voices. Uh, let's do some mystical uh, elf, elves chanting, and then on this side, <laughs> I'm just I'm just spitballing. I don't know what I'm doing here. Let's go with spherical. Why not? Crying apart sounds horrific, and then not aggressive. Let's go with smooth overtone chord. So then. instantly have some Christopher Young. We instantly have the exorcism of Emily Rose.
And again, right now I'm just using the thing. Let's not forget we can pitch things. So let's have it so that it actually pitches down as we go up. And fuck it, let's have it so that this side is in a bright church as it gets louder. And then as it gets up to the top, as it gets up to the top, they are out of breath. So you see, voices. It's got fucking voices in it, too. <laughs> Man. They have what, what, ambient. What's hybrid orchestra? Let's have a listen. Flying metal. How can I not click on flying metal? And you see, so this was something that bugged me at the beginning because I wanted an init patch. And an init patch is installize. It's like basically go back to nothing, to default, right? That was one of my complaints at the beginning because, you see, I went up here, which is basically the pre it's the snapshot or the preset browser, I call it. Let's go with Cluster Funk. I just want to see what that sounds like. Plenty of presets to go through. Remember, everything I've done pretty much is just me playing with the sounds. Um... So I was looking for an init patch here. I should probably make one, but there wasn't one. And then I was like, oh, okay, maybe it's here, which I think it is. Yeah. So you have to go, you have to go into, you have to init each preset by itself. Like that. And the thing that bugs me about the init is it's still its own sound. You know what I mean? <laughs> Lamenting brass and high tremolos. Um, but it does reset the things, which is cool. But the, uh, like, you know what I mean? There's three different preset browsers in it. So you have the master preset browser, which is where you change your patches. Then you have the, uh, like, the side or the, the column preset browser, which is down here, which is where you change, like, the, a combination of the two together. You know, so now we change it. Like, this side will change both. Like, if I click this, it will change both of these. So if I click this now to frigid, whatever that was, frigid gust, or we, you know, let's try an orchestral, hybrid orchestral, bowed storm. You know, so it's it's just changing those sounds, circuits. And then the other preset is you can change the individual source sounds. So within that preset, I can change one of those, but not the other. So let's change metal shiver while to like a voice while keeping out both symbols. You see, so there's three different preset browsers within it, which was confusing at first. Um, absolutely love it, though. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much everything uh, that there is in the library. I'm, I'm not going to go through all the presets because, as you can see, in Atmospheres alone, there's a whole fuck ton. I think the, I think the, the correct phrase is a cubic fuck ton of presets. And the cool thing is, is they're all equally as usable. Let's just pick a random, low and screaming. So if ever you need sound, and like I mentioned, I use this a lot at the minute, um, even in my big action cues, because there's parts in the track where it builds, you know, and you want like, sometimes I'll use it just for five seconds. Like there's a section building, da 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 da, -da and it's like, brrr, you know, like, and you have everything. So, like, if I was doing that, for example, it would be like, I would have, like, these two go up, and then this one, let's say, get louder as we go up. You know, so it'd be like... 
and it would just do that you know something like that normally i'd do it better than that but you'd have like strings and stuff and it would just build let's actually put it on strings so you get like some aggressive fucking gliss to chaos let's do it and then uh some strings that are doing uh let's do do we have tremolos oh yeah here we go see by the way look how much recorded stuff there is i'm just saying let's go soltasto so the soltasto is going to pitch up by two semitones this one's going to pitch up just by just by one like that just a very subtle one this one's going to start quiet no this one's going to start quieter and get louder i always do it the wrong way around it's going to start quieter than this one and get louder this one's going to stay static and then on this side fuck it we'll do brass aggressive screaming brass and then this one's going to be woodwinds aggressive uh let's go with wind to flutter right same kind of thing. This one, I did it the wrong way again. This one's going to get louder. Actually, no, the brass is going to get louder. Fuck that. Brass is going to get louder, and this one will slightly pitch up just, just a little bit. So now I can go. So if I put that in an action track, even though that took me, what, like 30 seconds? I could just do the strings. Right? Or just this side. I can build these um, transitional parts to any cue. Like, that's the thing. A lot of people are looking at this, and this definitely thrives at being a horror library. Um, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm sure it's not even trying to hide that fact. If you're doing a horror score, this is the way to do it because you have the amount of recorded stuff they have is insane. Like, and it baffles me that like it's, it only costs as much as it does. Like I've seen people complain because I think it's 300 pounds. I think that's how much it was. This was one of the first libraries where I, I considered how much it would cost me to get equal quality and control if I was to do it live. Right. And yes, I could probably get like a 99 session and record, you know, a $99 session and record my own things. But let me just quickly go through it. So I'm going to go atmosphere and let's just look at the strings. So look how many different string type of sounds there are. So what we'll do is we'll just unsolo this. I'm just going to put it up on the top and we'll just, and I'm going to try and make it so that the pitch doesn't do anything. There we go. So it's not doing anything. All right, so we're just playing back the samples. And look how many different... Right, and I'm I'm just in one part of it. Look, look how many there are. Ready? This is just string articulations. Still going. Right. Right. These are big fucking sections of orchestra. Like this is a full sounding string section. So imagine how long it would take you to record each of these articulations at different dynamics. So you have the soft version of it. So like, for example, let's play, let's play tremolo swarm. So the soft version, the mid version, And the high version, right? So imagine how long that would take you to record all those. Unless I don't know how big the orchestra is. So think about how much it would cost to rent the studio and hire that many players to record all these things, right? That's just strings. So then, of course, they went and got a brass section as well. And let's look at all the brass articulations. Right. 
right, so then you're doubling that on again, right? And then let's look at woodwinds. And these are all different, right? And remember, there's a soft, medium, like there's a dynamic range of these. So you can go from soft to loud with any of these. And, it, and they, they didn't just turn it down or do a mod wheel fade. Like it's literally soft, listen. And then it gets harder as you get louder. That's what she said. Right, and then... Right, so think how long it would take you to record all those. Then of course you've got percussion. then we have tutti, which if you don't know what that means, that means everything playing together. So that is, right, five different recording sessions. It had to have been because you've got strings by themselves, you've got brass by themselves, woodwinds by themselves, percussion by themselves, and then everything together, which means they had to have a session where they hired everybody at the same time. Unless they just built them, you know, from uh, individuals, but I don't think they did. Right? So you've got all that, which is great. But then they went and took the time to actually make hybrid versions of them all. Right? A bunch of metal shit. Etc. A load of modular shit. What the fuck? Right? A load of ambient sound design. Again, there's a lot of that too. And then they recorded voices too. I mean, I'm not saying. I mean, I don't know how better to explain that the value for money of this is insane. Yes, it's expensive, but because this isn't just playing back the samples, this is an instrument. This is one of the very rare instruments where it could actually make it so you wouldn't have to record the orchestra. Not like if you ever get the opportunity to record it live, do it live, hands down. But the chances are most of us, most of the time, are going to have to do most of our production and our score by ourselves, And what this library is giving you is live recorded orchestra, aleatorically, but giving you the control as if they were in front of you. And then, even if you don't like the sound itself, you can manipulate it with effects and you can change it. But not only that, you can layer and create your own stack of aleatoric instruments like you would in a live setting. You can have your violins playing tremolo, why the brass is playing like runs, why wind is doing this, why marimbas are just going up and down. You can create these combinations, but you can also, you know, with like being able to change the pitch and being able to add effects and things like that, you can build your own custom risers that will never sound like the pre-baked ones. You will never get symphobia complex with something like this because the amount of combinations that you have to work with means that you can push it somewhere completely original where you can't just find, you know, you can't just find the sound unless you dig into the presets. And that's what I'm saying. Like the presets in this are great if you want to just pull something and play around, but it's it's almost too easy to make something completely original. Like this, this setting I have here. 
Why is it? Oh, I muted everything. That like, for example, like because I just unmute these for a second. Like all I have to do is just change these. Like I'm not even not even looking. Let's just change and then change to woodwinds and then change this to to circuit whatever, right? I have something completely different. And all I did was change the actual sounds they are. You see what I'm saying? So then like I just change my my you know make it so that this one rises and then you know this one rises as well. And then we should have like a kind of a riser. And that's this thing earns its money. And like, I, I always like, I'm with you guys. I hate spending money if I don't have to. But the thing is, is this covers so much fucking ground. It's the first time in a long time. I, I just bought it straight up. I was like, I saw what it was. I watched a walkthrough video. I watched it for about one minute and I was like, I'm in, I'm 100% in on this. Um, because it does absolutely everything I need it to. It's, it's sound designy enough that I can use it just as an underscore. Like if, if there's a scene going on, I can just have it rumbling underneath and it adds texture, you know, and I can just control it. By the way, I believe you can actually assign that to an XY. Uh, if you have like an XY on your iPad, you can do it like that. You know, I can control it like that, but at the same time, I can also, should I want to, um, you know, just bang up a preset and, do, or, or sorry, like, you know, change some of the effects and build like a really aggressive riser. Or I can have a cluster that is melodic, you know, say I've got my strings playing a melodic line. I could have this double the melodic line, but over time slowly start to introduce the clusters from the cluster section. That's uh, like, I just showed you all the, all the string sounds and stuff. They weren't even the clusters. So like, for example, these are different. So they recorded all these as well. These are just strings. Of course, these go down. That's not just one page. You have things down below as well. Like I said, these are tonal as well. So you can actually move those around. So you can have something double the line, you know. And then... And then it gets more disgusting over time. So much thought went into this. Like, this, this is like... Out of all the sample libraries I think I've used this year so far, this is by far the the most complete one. Um, it's the most thoughtful. It's got so many different actual samples to play with. It has so much control that it's an actual instrument, and it has enough modulation control that you can completely change it into something different, something unique, something to you, which is what I was worried about at first. Because whenever you see an aleatoric library, my, my go-to thought process was, how long will it take before I can't use it anymore because the sound is so synonymous. It's, you know, it's so overused. Uh, sorry, it's so synonymous with like horror films or trailers or something. Like I say, Symphobia Complex. Every single one of you, I'm pretty sure in this chat room, can spot Symphobia Trailerizer. How many different things have you heard it in? And this is like the ultimate answer to that. And I'm hoping, I, got, I can't remember the actual developer's name. I wish I could because they deserve the credit. Um, look, at, look it up on Native Instruments website. But I want them to do m this for like everything, you know? <laughs> like I want like just a sound design version of this, more modular synths, more stuff, you know, something where it takes like a synth voice, like an oscillator, and then it blends up into some chaos things like that. Absolutely love this library. And like I say, so yeah, it's 300 pounds, which sounds expensive for an aleatoric library, but it's the first time I felt like it's an actual aleatoric instrument. And it allows me to do what I would do exactly with an orchestra, should I ever get the budget to record with one for fuck's sake. But 
Mm. And I feel like I've covered this quite in depth, so I'm probably going to put this video on YouTube, which means I need to do like an outro. So if you are watching this on the YouTubes, um, this is where I'm going to end like the YouTube section. If you're on the live stream, um, stick around. But um, yeah, if you're watching this on YouTube, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, you know, feel free to subscribe if you enjoyed. And um, I think the link to the live stream is now in the comment section whenever I upload a video from here to YouTube. Sorry about the distorted voice bit in the middle. I'm probably not going to edit the video, so I'm going to I'm going to annoy the YouTube people as much as I annoyed the live stream. Um, but yeah, so thanks for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video.